What's up? I'm James Young with James Young Photography, and I'm bringing you episode number six of Teach Me How to Lightroom. Today, we're really going to experience the power of shooting in RAW, and it's a huge example of why I always, always, always shoot RAW. We're going to take this portrait here and turn it into this. Boom, we're going to get all crazy with the edit. So let's get right into it. With this edit, I'm already a little bit ahead of us. You're going to see here that I've already cropped in a great deal. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, why in the world is it so far off in camera? Well, I can explain. If you've ever shot with any kind of visual effects in this photo shoot, obviously we're using wire pool smoke grenades. Sometimes you can't really anticipate what's going to be happening. Additionally, I was using off-camera flash. It was being held by an assistant carrying a monopod. And this was the first time that this model has ever worked with smoke grenades. And everybody was new to the entire situation. That being said, the smoke started going in a way that nobody anticipated. The model got in position. I got in position. And the light stand, well, it didn't move. So the subject got a lot closer to the light source. And the light didn't move back proportionally to the subject. So the subject got a little overexposed for our taste, but that's okay. This is exactly why we shoot raw. It's just in case. And you're going to be amazed with all the data that gets pulled out of this file. It's going to be amazing. So let's go down. Let's go to the tone curve because this is where I like to start. Bam, medium contrast curve. I'm not going to touch the exposure, even though it does seem a little overexposed. We're actually just going to keep that slider where it's at. With the contrast, we're going to go up pretty high on this. We're going to go around 75 or so. With our highlights, we're going to take them all the way down, minus 100. With the shadows, we're going to open them up quite a bit, somewhere around plus 65. Yeah, 65 looks good. As we move down to our whites, we're going to lower these as well, somewhere around minus 35 or so. Let's go with minus 35. That looks great. And with our blacks, we're going to bring our blacks down to about minus 50. Okay, good. We're off to a good start. With the clarity, we're going to leave it at its default setting on the basic panel, but we're going to add a lot of clarity to this in the end. With the vibrance, we're going to go plus 15. And saturation, minus 15. Let's scroll down a little bit. We're going to skip the tone curve for now, but we're coming back to it and we're going to go straight to split toning. In the split toning, in the highlights, we're going to go to about 60 or so on the hue. Yeah, let's go with 60, and then as we add that in, we're only going to go to about 10 or 15 or so. Let's do 10. For the shadows, we're going to go into that cooler area like we normally do. Somewhere around 220-ish. Let's do 223 is fine. The saturation that we're adding to that, we're going to go to around 25. We're finished with our split toning, but we're not totally done with our color grading. The rest of our color grading is going to take place in the tone curve, but I want to take care of some of the textures and some of the information in the smoke and in our model's face here so that we can round out the total exposure first. So I'm going to go to the adjustment brush tool, or you can press K on your keyboard. I'm going to double click on effect to zero out anything that was already there prior. And I want to start off with the smoke. For the smoke, we're going to crank up the clarity quite a bit. We're going to go around in the 60s, high 60s, low 70s. 67 will work. We're going to also add contrast by doing dehaze. For dehaze, we're going to go around plus 30 or so. Plus 31 is fine with me. And then we're just going to brush this in right where the smoke is at. And you can see right away, it's bringing out a lot of detail in the smoke. This is looking great. Perfect, I love it. Then what we're gonna do, we'll click erase and just make sure that we get that right off of our model's face. High clarity is not a good look on humans. I'm going to click back on my brush tool and I'm going to brush in around this area here. 
to make sure that there's not really a halo that appears around him. So let's turn that off and turn it back on. You can already see it's making a huge difference here. So that's awesome. I'm going to click new to create a brand new brush. Double click the effect and I'm going to come down a third of a stop of exposure and I'm going to paint that on our model's face. He's just a little bit too bright for my liking, but I don't want to lower the total exposure and you'll see why here in just a minute. So something I'm noticing in this image is this bottom left hand corner here. This rock is super bright because again, that's where the off camera flash was set and it apparently hit this rock. So that's fine. We can compensate for that. I'm going to take the graduated filter tool here, or you can press M on your keyboard. I'm going to double click again. I'm going to come really far down on this exposure here. Minus about two stops here. I got minus 2.1. And then I'm going to drag from the bottom left hand corner and drag up diagonally towards the right. And that's going to do a couple of things for us. Number one, it's going to tone down how bright that rock is. And number two, it's going to help round out our image in the end. So you can see here where the mask is affecting it. That looks great. I'm fine with that. And I'm going to close that. The last thing I'm going to do with our brushes, I'm actually going to add one more brush. Double click that, press new. And let's go to about minus three or four, or excuse me, minus point three or four. And just paint that in there. And now that looks a lot more natural on that rock. Perfect. So you can see here, we've really affected the way the total exposure looks by using those brushes. That's great. So now I want to round out the color grading on this. We started going in the direction with the split toning right over here where we're adding cool tones to the shadows and just restoring warm tones to the highlights. But I did a really subtle effect with the split toning. And the reason why I did that is because I want to add more through the tone curve. So when you get to the tone curve, there's a drop down next to channel. And by default, we normally work in RGB. For this, I want to click on it. I'm going to click blue. And this is going to allow us to affect the blue range of the pixels directly. So now that I'm in the blue channel, I'm going to establish a couple housekeeping items here. I'm going to click a node right in the middle, click a node in between the right two and in between the left two as well. So the node on the right hand side, I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. And then the node all the way to the left, we're going to raise this a little bit as well. Somewhere around 3% or so, 3.5%. Now that we've changed the way the tone curve is oriented on the blue channel. Let's go back to the RGB. Now we're going to add a matte finish to this. And the way we do that is we take the second node from the left on a medium contrast curve. We double click to remove it. From there, I'm going to raise that left hand side. And there you go. Perfect. It mutes the blacks and it looks really good. Perfect. So I'm super happy with the way the color grading on this looks. The next thing we're going to do, we'll continue to round out the image, but it's also going to bring out all that color grading information as well. So we're going to scroll down, we're going to hit effects, and we're going to add a, quite a bit of vignette to this. On the total amount, we're going to do minus 35. Then on the midpoint, we're going to go to around 10 or so. Let's do 10 on the midpoint. Perfect. And then on the roundness, we're going to increase the roundness quite a bit as well. Somewhere around plus 30. 33 is good. Make that nice and round. And you can see here by adding all of that dark exposure around the edges of the frame, it's now really, really, really increased that tone curve effect because the vast majority of the color grading that we've done takes place in the shadows. So we added much more shadow information in the vignette. Now watch this with the tone curve. Look at how powerful the tone curve is. We turn it off and we turn it on. Oh my goodness, that looks so amazing. I love it. So let's finish out this image with the sharpening. I'm just going to go plus 70, noise reduction, plus 30. Those are kind of my standards for when I get ready to print an image. I'm going to zoom in. Super happy. Of course, there's noise because we brought out the shadows quite a bit and it's a poor lit environment, but I'm okay with this amount of noise. 
I'm going to zoom out. So check this out. I'm going to hit reset to show us where we started from with this image. Oh my word. Something that you would think is basically unsalvageable. And honestly, if you shot JPEG, it would be to this, something that I actually do have a print of, something I'm incredibly proud of, and it would not have been possible if I wasn't shooting raw. Well, hopefully I was able to teach you something today. Hopefully if you're not shooting raw, I've at least made some sort of case to convince you that it is a good idea for you. Hopefully you did take the time to download the raw file in the description below to follow along with this, or maybe create your own edit that was even better than the direction that I took. If you did, I would love to see it. Post it on social media and tag me. Well, that's it for today. I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and this was episode number six of Teach Me How to Lightroom.